Have you been feeling unwell for more than two weeks after having coronavirus? Are you still suffering from fatigue, headaches, uh, breathlessness, chest pain, high heart rate, uh, skin or GI issues? Well, if you are, you're not the only one. In this film, I'm going to list the top 10 pieces of advice for managing your recovery based on everything we know so far about the virus and its devastating long tail of symptoms. Just how common is it to still be experiencing symptoms weeks or months after an initial infection? Well, this study found that 36.1% of COVID-19 cases have symptoms lasting longer than 30 days, and 14.8% still have at least one symptom after 90 days. Official data from the ONS in the UK puts the prevalence of symptoms lasting longer than three months at 1 in 10. And with tens of thousands of people in the UK and hundreds of thousands of people in the US catching the virus every single day, that's going to be a lot of people suffering from what we're now calling long COVID uh, in 2021. I'd like to hope that some of these tips might even be able to intervene, perhaps, in some cases and turn what might be a 12-month case of long COVID into potentially a three-month recovery. I certainly wish that I'd known what we know now uh, when I first got ill with the virus back in March. If you want more information and are fresh to this channel, then I've made a lot of films on the subject. This one describes what long COVID is and some of the misconceptions. Wondering why you're not getting better whilst others around you recovered quickly. Uh, this film talks about some of the risk factors for long COVID, drawn from a study I did of 824 long haulers. Wondering how long it's going to last? Uh, this film looks at the rate of recovery, based on a study I did of 1600 long haulers and wondering who I am and why I'm making these films, I talk about it here. But of course you're here for the 10 top tips, so let's get cracking. Firstly, diet, and uh, this one's going to be no fun at all. I'm really quite sorry about that. There's academic papers and study evidence that shows that uh, moving to a low histamine diet can have a really positive effect uh, on long COVID symptoms. Um, now, so effectively what that means is that things like tomatoes, avocados, spicy food uh, are all out. I'll put a link to this list of low and high histamine foods in the description. Sadly, and this is a big one, no booze. Um, alcohol is a complete shocker when it comes to long COVID. Uh, I thought I'd been getting a bit better and could risk a 0.5% bottle of low alcohol beer a couple of months ago, and I woke up feeling like I'd been on the mother of all benders. And trust me, I've been on a bender or two. Number two, stop exercising. This is another massive one, and it seems completely counterintuitive, but it's what you have to do. Uh, and that's not based just on the anecdotal uh, stories of thousands of long haulers who have found that exercise has prompted horrific relapses or even uh, the condition to kick in in the first place uh, altogether, um, but also uh, a very strong hypothesis proposed by Dr. Vensel, uh, which places NAD plus deficiency at the heart of long COVID symptoms. What does that mean? Basically, the, the virus has left your energy battery flat. And if you try and exercise too much, uh, your body is going to be forced to use some alternative metabolic pathways that have some unfortunate consequences. Uh, and that sets off a cascade of processes in your body that lead to the long COVID symptoms. It's quite possible that rushing back to exercise too quickly after an initial infection has triggered thousands of cases of long COVID. Uh, so learn from their experience and don't be one of them. Number three, uh, careful with your cognitive efforts. Now, whilst exercise is a fairly obvious use of energy, you might be surprised at how much energy a uh, cognitive effort takes up. And that can constitute uh, desk work, Zoom calls, phone calls, uh, even just faffing about on your phone. A half hour phone conversation can really take it out of you. What does this mean? Well, number four, uh, you've got to pace yourself. You can't and shouldn't try to work straight through a day like normal. Uh, taking frequent breaks to go and lie down and maybe sleep if necessary uh, are actually really important if you want to avoid a relapse. Pacing doesn't just mean doing less, it also means breaking those efforts up into smaller chunks, uh, however much you're actually trying to do. 
Imagine that you've got an energy battery that powers you through your day. I'm going to use this bottle of sun cream as an example. Normally, uh, you might expect pre-infection to have 100% worth of energy. Uh, and what that means is that you can spend all of this during your day, go to bed, wake up in the morning, and you're fine. So your activities of daily living, that's shopping, cooking, uh, eating, phone calls, looking after kids, whatever, takes up 30%. You might go for a, a run, you might exercise, that might take another 30 or 40% perhaps. And Maybe you go to bed with some left. That's all great. Um, this is the way we live our lives normally for, well, our entire lives to date, and this feels normal to us. Now, instead, imagine that you start your day only having 25% of that energy in your battery, uh, and those activities of daily living are still going to take 30% of that energy. So how on earth do you get through it? Well, the answer is pacing. Taking those regular breaks means you can recharge enough uh, between getting through the stuff uh, that you just about get through your day and can avoid or minimise the chances of having a relapse. So, number five, relapses. What are they? Well, when all the symptoms come flooding back and you feel absolutely wrecked, uh, like you've been run over by a truck, pretty much. Here's the tip for relapses. Um, do your best to avoid them, but there is some degree of inevitability about them and they may come for you, whatever. Uh, when they do, firstly, don't beat yourself up. It's okay, we <laughs> all experience them and you're not alone. And, this, and the second probably major tip here is don't try and push your way out of them. You have to rest. There is no way of trying to say, oh, I've got to get up, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. No, you're just gonna make things much, much worse. Um, it might take a few days for you to feel better but during that time the only way to get to that point when you feel better uh, is to rest and the uh, the more you rest the quicker you will indeed come out of it. Number six, uh, reassess your expectations. Um, anxiety and depression are incredibly commonly reported amongst people suffering from long COVID. And that's not just because uh, the condition completely trashes uh, the way that you would normally try and live your life, uh, but also uh, because of the serotonin imbalance that appears to be part of the condition itself. That's probably also why you're not sleeping very well. Um, it is really hard, but you do have to reframe your expectations of what's normal. If you live according to the expectations of what you might normally be able to do in a day, you're going to find it very, very difficult to not slip into a state of anxiety and depression because it's simply going to be impossible to get there without making yourself more ill. Um, you have to reframe your expectations about what's reasonable and what's achievable. Uh, and once you do that, you find yourself in a much better place for your mental health. Time frame to recovery is another part of this. Whilst half of those unwell at five weeks will be better at three months, implied by these ONS figures, half will not. And if you're one of them, chances are you're looking at a 12 to 18 month recovery like the rest of us. Where do those uh, figures come from? Well, SARS-1, which demonstrated very similar long-term symptoms to what we're seeing with long COVID. Number seven, speak to your GP and book yourself into a long COVID clinic. Uh, now, these are only just being set up in the UK and I don't know what the situation is in the US, but if you can, book yourself in. Uh, long COVID is not a homogenous condition. Everybody seems to be experiencing something slightly different. Uh, there are different degrees of inflammation in the body, uh, different organs affected between different people. So whatever investigations can be done by these clinics, they could be quite valuable and could lead to some uh, really quite beneficial treatments. Don't expect your GP to be able to necessarily work wonders though. Uh, the most commonly prescribed um, medications for long haulers are antihistamines and SSRIs. Which brings us to number eight, antihistamines. You don't even have to go to your GP. Over-the-counter antihistamines can make a huge difference uh, to treating some of the symptoms in long COVID. For more details on why, uh, watch this film uh, where I spoke to Dr. Tina Pears about the role of mast cell activation syndrome in long COVID sufferers. Number nine, when it comes to going back to work, don't rush back. Try and stagger your return to work if at all possible. The number of relapses suffered by long haulers who've rushed back to work are too numerous to count. And the same kind of applies to exercise too. Um, when you're starting to exercise again after feeling better, bring it back in very, very gently. Um, again, many long haulers experienced a really severe relapse from going for a really hard workout um, much too soon. I thought I'd leave a really big one for number 10, and that is treatments. And yes, we do now have treatment for long COVID. It starts with a low histamine diet. It may include some uh, prescription or over-the-counter medications, but there's one part of the puzzle which I've not mentioned yet, and which is super important, and that is uh, this stack of supplements. 
The most important of these is niacin in its nicotinic acid uh, of the flushing variety, if possible. Um, all of these supplements are available over the counter um, and the dosages recommended by Dr. Vensel and Dr. Piers uh, I will list in the description. I'll also list the contraindications for niacin. Now I do have to point out that I am not a doctor and I'm not advocating that you take any of these supplements. Um, if you have any concerns at all, uh, you need to speak to your GP first. With all of that said, I have done a study that has shown really, really encouraging results for the stack, and niacin in particular. Um, I'll link to that film here and in the description. If you're wondering why it works, it's because it replenishes your body's store of NAD+, and makes it less reliant on the troublesome metabolic pathways that set off the cascade of symptoms. And before I wrap this up, I'll throw in a cheeky 11th tip, and that is don't be afraid to reach out to a support network, either in person or virtually. This is a really hard thing to go through by yourself and you may find that many of the people around you find it very hard to uh, empathise with you or understand what it is you're going through because from the outside it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Find friends and family, people around you who can support you and perhaps consider joining one of the long haul uh, support groups on Facebook. Now it pains me to recommend anything to do with Zuckerberg's network of doom but these Facebook support groups have been a huge help for huge numbers of people. An infection of COVID-19 can take a little while to recover from, and I'm hoping that some of the tips in this film might speed that process up for some of you people out there who've caught the virus recently. Uh, for those of us who've caught it a long time ago and are still suffering, well, perhaps there's a couple of things in here uh, that you've forgotten about that might just help. And of course, this list is not exhaustive. If you've got any tips or thoughts of your own, please do leave them in the comments. There is the wisdom of crowds and all that. Let's try and get 2021 off to a positive start. Till next time.